and and I find, find people are very interested in when I have been playing it at uh, Charlie's. If I uh, play a song, say "Marching Through Georgia," I usually explain a little bit about the, the Sherman's march to the sea and uh, through uh, in, in going through Georgia and then. Uh, ending up at the Gulf of Mexico and then turning north where eventually they uh, uh, took Lee into and you know and then he was he had to, uh, to uh, the surrender at surrender. Appomattox yeah Appomattox that was and so there's a song you know uh, bring the good old bugle boys we'll sing another song sing it with a spirit that will move the world along Sing it as we used to sing it, 50,000 strong, as we were marching through Georgia. Hurrah, hurrah, we bring the jubilee. Hurrah, hurrah, the flag makes us free, as we sing the chorus from Atlanta to the sea, as we were marching through Georgia. Well, that's just... How did you learn your song? Well, there's a... My dad uh, was uh, from Missouri, and once in a while he would uh, get himself worked up and sing a little bit, but he wasn't very much of a singer. But uh, I got very interested by listening to Pete Seeger when uh, back in the uh, 50s of this century. The 1950s? Yes. See, now, now that's a few years ago. Yeah, it is. I was actually born in that decade. Well, you were around for a while. Already. I've got a, another uh, banjo that is a Gibson Master Tone, uh, and uh, it goes back. That's the first instrument I bought, and uh, it would, has done me really a good. Uh, I, I've made money with it, but the main thing is that I've uh, had a good time. I just I really enjoy doing this type of singing, you know. Have you been a, a banjo player for many, 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 many years? Well, I have, but I, I stopped it. I was, okay, let me just go back real quickly. I was a saxophone player in high school, mm -hmm. and uh, I helped, uh, we had a swing band, and we would play on weekends, bringing a little bit of money that you could a teenager could use at that time because this was in the 1940s during the war, actually. Right. And we would play at uh, 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 different types of, uh, uh, what do you call the, uh, I can't remember right now, the uh, uh, the place that these uh, soldiers would go. That were canteen. All, yeah, canteen. We would play at canteens, and, it, at, uh, and then later on, after the war, we'd play at uh, the... Uh, um, USOs? USOs, yeah. And, uh, and the Americans of four wars. I mean, wherever we get a gig, we would go. And then what happened, I got married, and uh, my wife and I have been together for 63 years. Wow, that, by the way, is amazing. And uh, I've, Congratulations. I've had children, and I've had grandchildren, and so that sort of got in the way in some ways of, uh, first of all, the... the uh, the swing instruments, the swing bands went uh, like that, you know, because they just weren't working with it. The vocalists took over from the swing bands. And uh, so I, I quit. I, I had to find something else to do. So I took, I grabbed my, I, I had heard uh, Pete Seeger, so I went to a few Pete Seeger concerts and I thought, God damn, that's a nice sounding instrument. So. I grabbed, a, uh, I bought that, the master tune that I've got at the music store right now getting worked on. But that's what I did and then I learned, uh, I learned how to play. I w w played uh, at uh, an outfit, uh, or oh, the U University of Southern California Trojans, uh, in, to, not to say just USC, which is, there's another USC on the East Coast in South Carolina. I, I know the one in LA. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, I, I quit playing after a while, after I had taken up the, uh, the instrument and I played around different places and I had other things to, other fish to fry, so to speak. So I didn't play for how long do you think it was, Ellen? Oh, I don't know, it was quite a while. Yeah, I didn't play at all. But when you learned how to play, we were living in cramped quarters yeah. and so, so I, he, I went back. We had to put 
Greg, our son, was a baby then. So he had to put folded up diapers in between the strings and the head of the banjo <laughs> so he could practice. Yeah. So uh, he wouldn't wake up the baby. Yes, that's true. And so he but couldn't I, really I, hear what he was playing. I mean, he could I eventually music, dropped but... playing altogether, though. I'm sorry. I eventually stopped playing altogether. Well, yeah, because... What kind um, of work were you doing? I was uh, teaching school. Okay. And I, I, I shouldn't say I stopped altogether because I would play for the kids. And you were giving lessons, too. Yeah, where, here? No, oh, no, I thought you were still talking about back in L.A. Well, I, I yeah, I did. Uh, you're right. After I, I, took, I started doing uh, lessons, uh, uh -huh. five-string banjo lessons, because there was a time there, a short time, that uh, it had a folk music uh, and Pete Seeger was so involved. so to speak, you know. So I had a lot Before of... Before the rock era hit, there was like a window yeah. of time, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I got into that, and then uh, after a while, I uh, I just sort of gave it up, though, for a while. And I had other things I wanted to do, and I didn't do any music at all for quite a while. Actually, um, to get, you know, interested in it again, I came to Hawaii... And uh, I just wanted to do some ex some things that, that some I could Hawaiian uh, things do like with the yeah with the fishing. Hawaiian kids. Uh, I would sing. Uh, uh, I married a wife on the month of June. Rizzle de rizzle de now now now. I carried her off in the light of the moon. Rizzle de rizzle de hey bum bustle de nicky nee nicky de retrical quality will it be will it be now now. She combed her hair but once a year. Rizzle de rizzle de now now now. She said her comb was much too dear. Rizzle de rizzle de hey bum bustle de nicky nee nicky de retrical quality will it be will it be now now now. She. Let's see, what's the next one? Oh, gee, honey. <laughs> see, I, I, this is another thing I have. Uh, as I've gotten older, I sometimes just sort of flummox the lines, you know. Yeah, flummox? You know. Flummox. There's, flummox. A word. There's a word. There's a word. Where I do you know. come from that word? Fumfer. 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 Yiddish. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Where yeah. do you get flummox now, from? You ought to know that. Nice she Jewish boy she like was. She was. Let's see. She <laughs> she combed her hair, but once a year. Rizzle de rizzle de now now now. She said her comb was once too dear. Rizzle de rizzle de hey bum bustle de nicky de nacky de ritual quality will it be will it be now now now. And so on. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids, so you know, like here's that. interesting. I'll be at the say at the park. Up here, and a kid will come up to me and say, "Hey, Mr. Reeves, rizzle de rizzle de now, now, now," <laughs> and because they remember me from being a substitute teacher, and I would bring my banjo along and teach them, uh, you know, these songs the that, that they they enjoy. You know, just to sort of make uh, the school uh, time interesting to them. You know, isn't it funny? Some of these kids that have a reputation for being difficult. When you give them something that's interesting to them and you treat them like human beings, that's right. They light up. Yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. Very definitely do. And uh, just to sing, you know, uh, yeah, some of the. Like, you know, I mean, who it's says rizzle de rizzle de hey bomb bossle de nickety nackety retrical quality? Only you. <laughs> Only me. That's right. Is that an original? No. Well, I learned that one from Pete Seeger. Oh, I was in the staff at Idlewild, California, up in the mountains, and Pete Seeger was on the faculty along with me and other Brownie McGee, Sonny Terry, wow. uh, different people that were there. And I was on the staff, and and uh, I just every time he would learn to sing something, I would put that in my head for the time oh. being, you know. And then there was also I could go to books like there's a a book a. Uh, 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 there's a book uh, uh, with, uh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Lomax, L Loma Alan Lomax, right, uh, the uh, songs of no folk songs of North America, and uh, it has everything in there practically that you would want to use. It's just excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's French, because I'm right. Uh huh. Is it? <laughs> well, I mean, I'll be, I'll believe anything. Oh, that's good. <laughs> well, my favorite kind of audience. You're gonna get the banjo. Oh, banjo yeah. oh, good, good. Now they have no idea that we were once in rig doo doo uh, with the uh, with our uh, money. 
uh, on the on the Great Depression of 1929. What about the Great Depression of 2015? Well, that's true, but the, uh, uh, the people that are go have gone through that a little bit have no idea what it was like. Of, of tw yeah, the, I know. This was what we've gone through now is just baby stuff compared to what we went through. In the, I remember the people coming to my rear uh, when I was in in Los Angeles area, uh, uh, and uh, people would come to the back of the uh, of the where we lived in. Just water. Thank you. And they would, uh, they would ask for food, mm -hmm. not money. Mm -hmm. Although they take money, they would actually do. You know, I have a child here, and we don't have anything to eat tonight. You know, and my mother would make them sandwiches and soups and things like this. You know, it was rough. There was, it was over twenty percent uh, unemployment. And for the blacks and the, and the uh, foreigners, uh, it was actually, in some ways, it got up closer to 40%. Now, if you can imagine 40%, for instance, okay. Oh, Willie, my Willie, I'm afraid of your ways. Willie, my Willie, I'm afraid of your ways. Afraid you're gonna lead my poor body astray. I dug on your grave the best part of last night. Well, he stabbed her in her heart, her heart's blood it did flow. Stabbed her in her heart, her heart's blood it did flow. Into the grave, pretty Polly did go. You carry the banjo in? Help him on off the stage. I'll get up there if he, if, if he gets a brain fart and I'll give him a clue on the word of the next song. That's an important role. Sometimes How old are you now, may I ask? I'm uh, 80, 86. Okay, and you've been to remember these words. What was the name of that other song with the Rumpel Dean? Rizzledy Rosaldy. Rizzledy Rosaldy. Can you play that one or you want to just sing it? That was quite... I just thought that was really interesting. Now these kids, they're from, were they in LA? They were finding you or you were here already? Here, teaching here in Big Island. Oh. I taught them here, I taught here for 20 years. I see. So there, I had a lot of kids that knew music. You know, uh, including, um, my dad was in, in Missouri, born and raised in Missouri. And if you think uh, some of the people that lived in Missouri had a favorite lineage, including Jesse James and other such guys, you know. That's a good song. And that's a good song. If we. If... <clears throat> Stole from the rich just to give to 
to the poor. He's a hand and a heart and a day a day dream. Guess he had a wife to mourn all her life. Three children they were brave. But that dirty little coward that shot Mr. Howard was made poor Jesse in his grave. Now that dirty little car coward was Robert Ford. Robert Ford with his cousin, and there was a $10,000 reward for Jesse James. Well, uh, Robert, uh, Jesse, Robert Ford decided that he would really like to have that money. And uh, to get it, though, he had to either bring Jesse in or uh, shoot him somehow. So what he did was waited till Jesse had taken off his guns, and he was uh, putting a... a Putting his, uh, he had to, sorry, he had to uh, put a, a picture on the wall that he was going to do. And when he did that, he took off, took off his guns, and he got killed. Uh, Robert Ford did that, and he said, "Jesse James, uh, it was Robert Ford, that dirty little coward. He, I wonder how he just feel for, for he ate of Jesse's." bread and he slept in Jesse's bed then he laid Je poor Jesse in his grave and also at that time he said uh, Jesse was a lad that uh, Mr. Howard was Jesse's alias he had a pseudo name so no one would know who he was that's right exactly and he was uh, uh, he was he was in uh, in Missouri at the time and it was uh, Jesse was a man a friend to the poor He'd never see a man suffer pain But that dirty little coward that shot Mr. Howard Has laid poor Jesse in his grave Now it was Robert Ford, that dirty little coward I wonder how he just feel For he ate of Jesse's bread and he slept in Jesse's bed Laid poor Jesse in his grave Jesse's death, they wondered how he come to fall. It was one of the gang shot Jesse in the back, while Jesse hung a picture on the wall. Now Jesse had a wife to mourn all her life, three children they were brave. But that dirty little coward that shot Mr. Howard has laid poor Jesse in his grave. There's a hundred verses, verses to that, and I didn't want to go through them because I just, it just sort of gets me, you know. Anyway, uh, to, here's another song, though, that I did, I did, and it's sort of nice. It's, it's called The Fox. Okay. Well, the fox went out on a chilly night. He prayed for the moon to give him light. Many a mile to go that night before he reached the town, oh, town, oh, town, oh. Many a mile to go that night before he reached the town, oh. Well, the fox, the fox he ran to, it came to a bin. Ducks and geese were kept therein. Many of you will increase my chin before I leave that town, oh, town, oh, town, oh. Many of you are gonna grease my chin before I leave this town hall. Oh. He grabbed a gray goose by the neck, he slung the duck across his back. Didn't mind the quack, quack, quack when the sleep all dangling down oh, down oh, down oh. Didn't mind the quack, quack, quack with the clickers all dangling down. Oh. Well, old mother flopper flopper jumped out of bed. Out of the window she jammed her head. Bill on Johnny, a goose is gone, the fox is on the town. Oh, town, oh, town, oh. John, John, great goose is gone, and the fox is on the town. Oh. Well, Johnny ran to the top of the hill. He roared his horn. He, he blew his horn most loud and shrill. The fox, he said, better free my kill. They'll soon be on my trail. Cozy den there with the little ones, eight, nine, ten. Daddy, daddy, better go back again. It must be a mighty fine town, oh, town, oh, town, oh. 
daddy, daddy, better go back again. It must be a mighty funny town. Well, the fox and his wife without a nice drive cut up their two, cut up their roots with a carving knife. They never had such a supper in their life on the little old shoot on the bones old, bones old, bones old. Never had such a supper in their life on the little old shoot on the bones old. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. I bet See, you've never heard many of these, have no, you? No, I heard the one about that third little cow that shot Mr. Howard. Yeah, that Jesse must have been, James. Others have done that over time. Yeah, I they think. have. In fact, the song, the the melody line to that is, uh, is Jesse James and and 18... I was born long ago in 1890, 1891. I've seen many a penny. That's the same as Jesse James. I was born long ago. You still in need of something to read. Here's a story of Bonnie and Clyde. Now Bonnie and Clyde are the Barrows gang. I'm sure you all have read. They rob and they steal, and those that squeal are usually found dying or dead. If a man is found in old Dallas town, and they haven't got a clue for a guy, just to keep the staff clean, or they can't find the fiend, we'll blame it on Bonnie and Clyde. Now Bonnie and Clyde are the Barrows gang. I'm sure you all have dressed How they rob and they steal And those that squeal Are usually found dying or dead And so on it goes on So you have three songs right there uh, Played in the same uh, the same tunes, you know The same melody line Yeah And they've used it so many times That uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other ones That you could hear too, you know I well, just, you know, it's. Uh, I think the most important part is how you communicate. You how know? you what? How you communicate. You know, it wasn't like you said in the '30s, in the '40s, when times were hard. A little bit went so far to help people, and uh, the most important thing is always the the people and uh, the communicating. You know, I mean, when you play at Charlie's. Um, you just play whatever comes to mind. Is it a talent contest or just having fun? Oh, no, no, just having fun. Strictly just having fun. And I usually, aside from my forgetting the words and things of this kind, I, I sort of blow the, the words and the tunes sometimes. But it works all right because they sort of enjoy it, I think. So. They enjoy that you're playing and still having it, a good time. With yeah, it. yeah. And occasionally, the mall will switch over to the recorder, to the flute. Yeah. Oh, you play a recorder. You want to hear me play a few? Sure, you got licks it. on it. Here, can you hold this? A sure. Second? Got it. That's a nice That's instrument. That's a nice instrument, isn't it? Yeah. Well, listen to a story about a man named Jed. Right. <laughs> it sounds like. Beverly Hillbilly. I bet he can play that one too, huh? Sure. What's funny is when he has these little brain farts and forgets things <laughs> at Charlie's, they all go right along with him. Oh, they love him. Hey, guys, they you know your stuff, too. Okay. Hi, I'm Lamar's Rody. They're, they're, you know, friends. Okay, great. Yeah, see, this... I was telling him about the capo you put on the fifth string, Lamar. What's that? You put I was a telling Jason capo on the about you string. having customized it with the capo on the fifth string. Capo on the fifth string? Oh, yeah, that was this, this right here. Yeah. See, the interesting thing is is that uh, the fifth string is a drone string. So you uh, want to have it uh, in relationship to all the strings up here. So if you want to have uh, this sounding as a drone string and you tune it up, let's say, by putting a capo up here, you have to make this capo go up too. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, this thing here is sort of interesting too, is that uh, 
That's not mine, is it? No. No, that's the. Uh, Yours doesn't have a. a, a you don't have an, a, a movable uh, thing down below oh. here, which is sort of not too good because you. It's just what's going on here is is, is bad note. I I need to get this with a new. See what I've got here. Cork. Is, yeah, it's not cork. I just put some some glue or glued tape or something on it, you know. But this is in the key of F. But this will work a little bit better. I think. Put here, and this is the key is C. Let me see if I can do a little bit better. Somehow close to a, a, a like a saxophone or a flute or anything. This is just an old recorder that kids learn. You know. I was going to say I remember learning on a recorder yeah. years ago. That was the first instrument they introduced us to. Yeah, and it's usually the last one that you kids because it's really not a. It's hard to teach it, for, you know. But I mean, it's sort of pretty, you know, if you. Sing it a little bit. Sometimes it's Shakespeare's time. It'll be an interlude yeah, on the time. That's so funny. Shave ice. <laughs> ice. I should give you your instrument back. It's beautiful. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Yep. Is that what he's doing? Yeah. I can see all obstacles in my way. Sing it, Very Jason. good. <laughs> Go ahead. Come on. Gone on. are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's you gonna be a bride. You down here and sing, man. <laughs> I told him he should come follow up. Come oh, yeah? tomorrow night to Charlie's. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow night you guys yeah. are gonna be at Charlie's? I think so. But, you know, I don't have an instrument here with me, but I can sing. Are yeah. you a guitarist? I used to be, and then I uh, tripped over a trampoline and it ended my guitar playing career. But, um, I, you know, I could stand up. I've been so many places in my life and time. I've sung a lot of songs. I made some bad rhyme. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Yeah. So I was trying to think of some songs that we know in common here. I bet you know the Beverly Hillbill. You know that one? No, it's one. See, what it is, there's, um, this is a good um, start right here. The Beverly Hillbillies was played in a style called bluegrass. And what I, I don't play that anymore I, because what happens is uh, you, it takes a lot of three-finger picking here with different picks on the outside. And what I play, I play something called uh, uh, the, um, what is it? The, uh, I know I'm eroding, but I'm blanking on this one. It's not uh, bluegrass. No, it's not bluegrass. It's it's the, uh, it's when you hit down. Or, uh, the sh claw hammer. hammer, claw hammer. Claw. Now this is called claw hammer. Here's the reason. This is really good for old men. Because what happens, you play down with the back of the fingernail. I see. In in bluegrass, to, to play like in the one on the on the hillbillies. Right? Hillbillies, you pick up. Pick it up. You pick up, and you know. Uh, I can't even do it. It's now, just, it just hurts if you played fingers. it with the claw hammer style, it would sound totally different, huh? Yeah, because first of all, I'd wear three picks, thumb pick, 
and these two picks here. The uh, claw hammer style uh, is uh, much, uh, uh, it's, uh, you're, you're getting your uh, sounds from your uh, picking down. It's the only tune I know, the only uh, one that I can imagine where you're playing down on the like this. claw hammer style as opposed to Bluegrass. Earl Scruggs and those guys that played bluegrass. Yeah. So uh, close, when, when close we cigar. put this on, if you guys will share it, we're going to see what we could do about putting this out. And, uh, you know, that word viral, I used to think it was uh, only for viruses, but no, no, no. no. <laughs> In this day of internet, it's a very big difference. Now going viral means it goes to all kinds of places and people listen and watch that wouldn't otherwise have seen this. So here we are in beautiful Maui, Hawaii, in the private studio of Ellen and Lamar Reeves, Reeves in Pukalani. Pukalani, what does that mean? Hole in the heavens? A hole in the sky. But... uh let us say now we're going to see some more performing I by our. A few other songs. Just some glancing. He's on TV. No, that's okay. You got to see yourself here. He just played us oh, back yeah. a little bit of you. I remember a few little songs that I just glanced at here. I'll... Okay. Yeah. You got? Go ahead. I'm going to come back to you. Okay, so <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Railroad Man. What time do your trains roll by? At 9.15 and 2.44 25 minutes to 5 It's 9.15 and 2.44 25 minutes to 5 Thank you, Mr. Railroad Man Gonna watch your train roll by I was standing on Waiting for an old freight train that carried an empty car. It's 9.15 and 2.45, 25 minutes to 6. Thank you, Mr. Railroad Man, gonna watch these trains roll by. Well, I stepped across the platform, smoking my cheap cigar. And I caught me the end of an old freight train And I caught me the end of that car I sat down in a gambling game Could not play my hand Just thinking about that one that I love Ran away with another man Ran away Just thinking about that one that I love Ran right away with another man Yeehaw! Yeah. yeah. And then there's uh, another as long as I was a railroad brakeman too at one time in my uh, oh. life of sin, you know. <laughs> They gave him his orders in Monroe, Virginia, saying, Steve, 
you're way behind time. This is not 38, but it's old 97. You must bring her into Danville on time. Well, he gave him his, he handed his orders to Monroe, Virginia. Wait, wait, I've got the wrong thing. He turned and he said to his black greasy fireman, shovel on a little more coal. For if we hit that white old mountain, you can watch old 97 roll. It's a mighty rough road from Lynchburg to Danville, a road on a three mile grade. It was on this grade that he lost his average, you can see what a jump he made. He was coming down the hill doing 90 miles an hour when his whistle broke into a scream. They found him in the wreck with his hand on the throttle. He was scalded to death by the steam. Now, ladies, you must take warning from this time now and learn. Never speak harsh words to your true love and husband. He may leave you and never return. You ever hear that one? No, but I tell you, they have interesting themes, these songs. Um, I used to, they're sort of love songs with a twist. Yeah, because this one is, you know, they got killed because of, they, there was two, it just got, they had steam and the steam, he got going and then they lost this, the, uh, uh, whatever they lost his average, which I mean, I imagine it was his steam, steam uh, to make it up the hill. Yeah, coming down the hill or something. I don't know what happened. The Kingston he, Trio, you know that kind of stuff. Was no, he same? was. He, they were. Uh, they did. A, they made a lot of money during this stuff. You know. Yeah, they did. There's a there's a guy that's from the Kingston Trio lives on Maui somewhere. He was. Yeah. Now. Well, was he, uh, what, did, what, what did he play? Was it a banjo? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that he was uh, that he really made a lot of money at that time. Well, maybe he'll see this show and we'll. Uh, they did the MTA. Do a duo. Yeah, yeah. Huh? They did a song called the MTA. Charlie riding the MTA. Will they ever return? It's no, a... he never returned, and his fate is still unknown. Just Poor like Paul yeah. He will ride forever, meet the streets of Boston. He's, He's a, a man, man who, who never, never returned. returned. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie's wife goes down to the Scully Square station every day at quarter past three, and through the open window she hails, she hands Charlie a sandwich as the train comes rumbling through. How, how come Charlie didn't get off the train? Asshole. Oh. Asshole. <laughs> Excuse me there. Oh, yeah, well, they understand it. There's a few people out there that know these words. Yeah, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. Now, and there was you, another one, too. Nick a Reynolds. Second. Uh, 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 if I can remember, well, how's the sing a little bit of the uh, the, uh, the the when the the Battle of New Orleans in 1814? We took a little yeah, trip. In 1814, we took a little, little trip. That's too fast. Okay. In 1814, we took a little trip. Along with Colonel Jackson down to mighty Mississippi, we took a little bacon and we took a little beans and we met the bloody British at the Battle of New Orleans. In 18 and 14, we took a little trip along with General Jackson down the mighty Mississippi. Took a little bacon and we took a little beans and we met the bloody British in the town of New Orleans. Fired our guns and the British kept to come. There wasn't one many as it was a while ago. Fired once more and they began to run. Down the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico. Fire till we 
song of Israel, then we opened up our scroll down and really good as hell. I can't remember that. I know the words. We fired but I... our muskets till the barrels melted down, and we grabbed an alligator, we poured another round. We filled That's his right. ass with cannonballs and powdered his behind, and when we touched the powder off, the gator lost, lost his, his mind. mind. That was it. <laughs> and then uh, we uh, walked back to town in our dirty ragged pants, and we danced all night with the pretty girl from France. And we didn't we didn't understand them, but we sure did like the charms, and we understood them better when we got them in our arms and fired our guns and everybody's <laughs> kept coming. Wasn't not many as it was a while ago. Fired once more and they began to Through the bars and the ran 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 through the bars I God, I wish I could remember his name. He gave me a card when we went to see my friend Bob, who later died. He, uh, he, I forgot what, what happened on him anyway. Anyway, let's see what else we got here. They were, so we had that one there, and this is, uh, this is one that... Play six eight on the banjo. Oh. Let's see if I can remember what this. Uh... Well, Johnny Horton did a song called "North to Alaska" and "Sink to Bismarck." Yeah, were those were with uh, banjo? In May of 1941, the war had just begun. The Germans had the biggest ship that had the biggest guns. The Bismarck was the biggest ship that ever sailed the sea. Oh, the guns as big as something and something else to me. Yeah, sink the Bismarck, which is a real thing. Now, you see, if you were in a big studio, the bucks would be spending big bucks. But here we are. Why would all he be of sending, you. Why would he be sending big bucks? Well, when you rent out a big studio, it costs money for the studio. When you use your telephone and your carport, and your carport it's like budget time. Yeah. But I'm tired. Well, that's I don't okay. Want to do anymore? I think you did great. I think yeah. you did more than I thought you'd do. Yeah. I must tell you, and it's I, really a pleasure to come and see you play, and I hope that I can uh, spend more time with you. Well, you heard my basic stick here, so yeah. Beyond that, I mean, there's not much more I can do at <clears throat> my age. Ah. 86. Hey man, it's hard for me to, I, I was, I remembered a lot of the songs, although, but it, it, they fly away, you know, I hear. I say to Lamar, he's got 86 years of memory, there's no computer chip to store this, like you have in a computer, so when you got to go back on 86 years of memory, how are you automatically going to come up with a song you learned at the age of 11? That's you got to go through the pile. <laughs> Let's go through the pile. But it's great at Charlie's because he's a regular now. Well, you know, and all you got to do is feed him one line and he'll, he'll come right back. Yeah. Well, and, the kid, and the people there, they, they know I'm, they like me. And so, they're genuine, absolutely. Yeah. I cannot help them on and off the stage anymore. I'm still his roadie. <clears throat> but enough people know them because they know when they call Lamar number four and he needs a little bit of assistance getting on the stage with the banjo. Two big guys are always there to help him on and off. I can't even get through anymore. <laughs> so he's... Uh, so that works out pretty good. You know, they help me up. And now, for a while... It's nice he, having you here, too, man. Thank you, know? you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. So I hear that uh, old Bob is a, a regular uh, with you now. Well, Bob is a very colorful man. <laughs> He filmed him in the old coffee shop the last I time. I mean, you remember there was a comedian named Norm Crosby? Yes. He used to take words and butcher them on purpose. Bob does it, but he doesn't know he's doing it. He tells a story, and by the end of it, you're like, what did he say? No idea. And he doesn't either. <laughs> he doesn't know what he said? Oh, yeah. He's, he's, Bob is truly a character unique to his own. 
He <laughs> just is, he got so much fire on it. Uh -huh. New York. Oh, yeah. We're here at Charlie's. Charlie's sure really having a lot of fun up here. Thank you for inviting us. You're welcome. We will see you very soon. Aloha. What a nice tree to run into you. It's always a pleasure to see you, Bob.